Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host for this edition where I have another EV to review, as you can see behind me. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the show. Also want to thank uh, Stellantis Canada for allowing me the use of this 2021 Pacifica Hybrid or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. This is the Pinnacle Edition, the top of the line, of course, that they always uh, that they usually give press to review. So I want to thank them again for giving me this uh, vehicle. Let me get right into some of my thoughts. Well, what a better fitting place to do my review right next to a school, because we all know that minivans are great for people movers, they're great for families, and they've been around for a long time. And you know, and when it comes to hauling people in cargo, minivans are better than SUVs, in my opinion. And in fact, I wish more people would think about that, because SUVs tend to use more gas, and they're even sometimes bigger than these. And of course, the true architect of the minivan segment is Chrysler. Um, Chrysler Corporation invented the modern minivan segment in 1984 with the first offering, the Dodge Caravan. Now today, the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica remains one of the most popular vehicles in this segment, along with, of course, competitors, the Honda Odyssey and the Toyota Sienna. There remains a bedrock of loyal buyers who appreciate a minivan's superior people and cargo carrying capabilities, especially when it comes to ferrying kids, pets and seniors and all other stuff combined. Now, however, more importantly, and this is a fact I want to stress, but for family and, and minivan comfort, the Pacifica is the only one in North America that has a plug, and that's what excites me about this vehicle. Now, for 2021, the Pacifica gets new exterior styling that includes a new grill, LED headlamps, fog lamps, and tail lamps. The new front-end appearance helps differentiate the Pacifica from Chrysler's entry-level minivan, the Voyager and it gives the Pacifica a slightly more substantial look in a bid to tempt buyers who might otherwise automatically default to crossover SUVs instead, as I mentioned earlier. And the rear lift gate, the wheel designs uh, have also been tweaked on this 2021 model year as well. Now, I like the design of the Pacifica. I, in fact, I've always liked the design of it, but the tweaks really make it stand out even nicer. You know, it's not your average people mover. It's got some nice sloping lines. It's going to be as aerodynamic as it's going to be for a vehicle of this class and this size. But I think it looks really nice. It does turn some heads, even for a minivan, which is interesting. But it's got very subtle, very pleasant looks, and it's extremely capable. Now, people typically don't buy minivans for their use, for their look, excuse me. They buy it for their usage. And the Pacifica, of course, being a Chrysler product, is great at moving people around. Can open all kinds of doors with the key fob. Um, can open the side doors. And you can do this internally as well. Can open the rear hatch here, which everything's powered. So again, in this pinnacle top of the line model, everything is powered on this. But as you can see, there's oodles of space on this. And, and this does have a nice new fabric as well, which I'll talk about in a sec. But the functionality, getting in and out, ingress, egress, all that kind of stuff is just a very pleasant experience when you're dealing with the minivan segment. The interior is airy and spacious. It's packed with cubbies, cup, cup holders, slide out bins, and connectivity. And the Pacifica is big on the features that minivan buyers love. Now, I found the fit and finish to be very good in those materials. There were no squeaks, rattles, and rolls. There was a little bit of bass thump coming from one of the side doors uh, when I cranked up the stereo a little bit. So one of the speakers might be slightly loose, or it just could be I like the bass a little too high sometimes. Now, my fancy Pinnacle model comes with quilted leather upholstery. And the Pacifica's standard stone go seats offer less padding than those in the rivals because they need to fold up compactly enough to fit inside the floor bins, of course. Now on these seats, even though Chrysler says they are a bit thinner than the others uh, for stow and go purposes, I found them to be extremely comfortable and any passengers I had were very comfortable as well for the short time that we're driving around. Now one thing about the stow and go, and I'll show you how it works in the, in the third row in a sec, but for the second row, typically there is a stow and row function. But in the PHEV version, in this plug-in hybrid version, the battery pack sits underneath this middle area. Uh, of course, low on the floor. So therefore, you, lo you lose the stone go advantage for the second row only. So the seats do, you know, flip like that. They recline. Um, they will flip forward if you want, if you need to push them against the back here of this seat. But if you want a flat floor from the back of the first row all the way to the end, if you're moving stuff, then you actually need to take these seats out in order to get that just for the second row captain's chairs. 
Now for the third row and stowage go, it's pretty simple. You do have this cavernous uh, rear cargo area, as you can see here, and I'll give you some cargo specs in a minute. But for folding the seats down, it's quite simple. There's a one, two, three type of element to it. You just follow the cords. You pull the one, press the two, and of course on camera, of course it's not going to work. There you go. And then it folds down right into the cubby. Let me try that again. Pull the one, pull the two, let her rip and off she goes, sinks into the cargo. So it's that easy. Now there may be a power on some models, but on this one, it's not a power, it's a manual system. And that feature is available on other non plug-in hybrid models, as I mentioned for the second row, but not. But as you can see, you have a cavernous, cavernous cargo area. And that's what minivans give you, not only people carrying capacities, but a lot of stuff. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of cargo capacity in this with the uh, all the seats up uh, just for the back boot. You get 915 li a cubic liter, excuse me, or 32.3 cubic feet of volume behind the third row. So put down that third row as I've done here, and I'll zoom in to this, and you can see a little bit more of the room. Uh, with that, uh, just behind the second row, you up it to 2,478 liters or 87 and a half cubic feet. And then if I put down those two seats, or actually in this case, take them out, let me adjust the frame here and uh, zoom in a little bit more. Uh, you can see there's lots of room between the seats and the front seats. If I take those seats out, then I'm at 3,979 liters or 140 and a half cubic feet. Now, as I mentioned off the top, what gets me excited about the Pinnacle or the Chrysler Hybrid Pacifica Hybrid PHEV, there's a lot to say, is that it has a plug. And as you can see here, you open the front port, you have your standard J1772. It only supports level one and level two charging. Now the battery pack of this vehicle is 16 kilowatt hours, and that's a decent size, even though this is a big heavy vehicle, it's over 5,000 pounds of weight. So it is pretty heavy. But it is a decent enough size to give the average user, EPA rated range is about 32 miles, 30, 32 miles on this. Um, I've been seeing, which is around, I believe, uh, 52 kilometers, something like that. I've been actually seeing with these nicer temperatures that we've had this uh, for the last week of September here, about 61, 62 kilometer range on a full charge. So I had been plugging this in every night and I'll give you all the efficiencies and what I've seen from this near the end of the show. But it's a decent sized battery and that's one reason that I'm very excited about this as well is because A, it's the only product on this segment that has a plug and B, it is a good enough battery size to do a lot of daily driving work. Now, this is a sound that we don't hear too much on my channel, especially doing car reviews, the sound of an engine running. Well, this does have a motor, as I mentioned, it's a 3.6 liter V6. Um, combined power between the engine and the electric motors is about 260 horsepower which is good enough to take it from zero to 60 in about eight seconds or so, just under eight seconds. That's pretty good for a minivan when you think about that type of uh, acceleration. Now the powertrain on the Pacifica is unique in that it has a one-way clutch and the charging starting motor as well can be used in a dual motor electric drive. So this is not an all-wheel drive vehicle. It is front wheel drive only but there are two electric motors in here that produce the power. Um, and the additional functionality maximizes efficiency and also allows for optimum all electric drive vehicle speed. There is enough torque in this to get up and go, but if you uh, put your foot all the way down on the accelerator, nine times out of 10, the engine's gonna kick in to give you that extra boost and supply power to the drivetrain. Now the engine is seamlessly integrated into the powertrain and contributes towards high voltage battery charging or vehicle propulsion and it's all automatic based on driving conditions. Both motors are constantly working to best integrate electric power versus gas until the charge is depleted or vice versa. The system is constantly monitoring to provide you with maximum fuel efficiency and as I mentioned it comes only in a front wheel drive variant for the plug-in hybrid version uh, that we see here. Once the electric charge is fully consumed, the vehicle seamlessly transitions to solely using gas. Now, one thing about this vehicle, there is no switch to kind of turn and put it in EV mode only. As I mentioned, this is all automatic. It runs seamlessly and it just does its thing. The owner doesn't really have to think about it. It just does its thing. There's pros and cons to that. I, I personally would like to see a button or like to have control to run in EV mode only. But it, so far, it's doing a pretty good job at maximizing the uh, state of charge that's in that battery and pulling as much energy out of it as it can without using the 
the gas motor. Doing a pretty good job. And again, I'll talk about some of the stats near the end of this, uh, this review. So when we look at EVs, we always wanna talk about range. And as I mentioned, I am getting pretty decent range this week with the nicer temperatures in around 60 kilometers or so of all electric. The old electric is hard to gauge, as I mentioned, because it, the engine will automatically kick in at certain times and run, but it does keep track of how much uh, uh, distance you're going with the engine, how much use, and how much through the battery until it's depleted. But with this setup, EPA mileage is really what's going to get a lot of potential buyers of this uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle minivan interested in it. According to the US EPA, the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica is rated at 97 miles per gallon E which is that combined electric, which is that electric score, or 2.9 liters E per 100 kilometers. Extremely low, very good. Now, and that's combined city and highway driving for basically when the battery is charged until it runs out of charge, enough charge to, to keep it going. Because the Pacifica runs solely on the 16 kilowatt battery, for, as I mentioned, for up to that range, and then the uh, engine kicks in sometimes periodically during the driving sequences, but most of the time it'll stay dormant until the end. Now, if it's winter and you're running the heat and things like this, this does not have a heat pump, so it, it will draw probably some power from the engine or from the battery to, to provide heating and use a bit more, use more energy there. Uh, when the Pacifica operates in conventional hybrid mode, uh, EPA says it drops down to about 35 miles per gallon or eight liters per 100 kilometers, which is kind of a, a, the norm, but still pretty good for a vehicle of this size. Now for charging the uh, Pacifica, it's, as I mentioned, it's only a level one charging. Uh, source, so uh, level one, level two. If you use a level one source, just your standard 115 plug, it'll charge about 14 hours, so you could squeeze it in over a night. If you're using a level two, it's about two hours, or just under, uh, just over, I found it just under two hours for me, depending on the state of the charge, but definitely you can plug this in every night, which is what I've been doing in, in using this. I've been using this as it would my vehicle, in my normal driving uh, habits, and I would plug it in every night to at least get uh, full charge to maximize the battery for the next day. Now, as I mentioned, this is a very nice and comfortable interior, as it should be for a minivan. You've got lots of rooms here. Um, it's got a pretty nice infotainment system. I'm not gonna walk you through everything because there's a lot of stuff on here, but it's the Uconnect system that Chrysler has in a lot of their products. This is a nice 10.1 inch screen. So it gives you lots of different information on what you're looking for. It has Bluetooth set up, it has navigation as well. Um, uh, lots and lots of USB chargers, lots of cup holders, lots of storage pockets. It really is outfitted quite nicely to take people and family all around town to, during their daily trips, but also on longer trips where it really shines from a comfort level. Now, of course, you guys know I always try to get in and out of the rear seats, see how my uh, large frame, and I'll put that nicely, can, can navigate some spaces sometimes. Well, in a minivan, it's not gonna be any problem, of course, like a larger SUV. You have grab handles to get in and pull yourself in. Uh, don't really have to duck too much. Lots of leg room. I have this seat where I would have it. This seat is probably a bit forward as well. These are manually adjustable seats with a, some, with a recline function as well. Here in the second row and in the third row, but very comfortable seats. Lots of headroom, there's vents here. Uh, you've got the reading lights and all kinds of little amenities and the doors and things like that to keep you busy. Of course, Chrysler products do have a lot of advanced safety features. They don't give it a name, marketing name. They just call it advanced driving safety features, which is really easy to understand. But you have all kinds of assistant features, including forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, automatic high beams backup camera. It's a really nice backup camera system as well um, that uh, shows you all kinds of different viewpoints. There's a surround a camera system as well on this a higher end vehicle. Reverse parking collision avoidance assistance, adaptive cruise control with stop and go capabilities. I tested the adaptive cruise control. It was okay and it was just okay. It does what it says it does. Nothing fancy. The lane keeping does ping pong. So it really wasn't anything worth putting on film. It's okay, I wouldn't probably use it. I'd use the adaptive cruise for long trips, but I wouldn't use the lane keeping, I would manually drive. But it does have rear cross traffic warning, blind spot warning, and reverse parking distance warning as well, all kinds of stuff. Now the pinnacle trim adds front and rear parking distance warnings. It beeps faster the closer you get to the obstacle, so that sonic, you know, kind of using the sensors there, and, and the surround view camera as well as on this. Now, there is also an audible pedestrian warning system, which uses a distinct sound to alert pedestrians that your vehicle is approaching. The sound is made from an in-car synthesizer with a speaker located in the underhood compartment. 
and the warning system is automatically activated. The vehicle is in reverse, neutral, drive, or low. And I will uh, show you uh, coming up what the, I'll do a video and you can hear what that sound sounds like. But it does sound like a spacecraft and it's on, I think, all the time. I don't think it's just speed related. It is a cool because it does attract people like going down the street in, in, in EV mode. And, you know, without that sound, you can creep up on people and scare them. So it's a nice touch that they have. Well, now that you've seen the vehicle and given you a few specs about it, let me take you for a quick drive. All right. So just a quick uh, drive in the... Pacifica Hybrid, and I guess first off, I should probably close the, um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Probably should close the sunroof here, <laughs> just so we can get a better sense of sound. So um, you can hear that pedestrian warning. It does come through into the cabin when you're driving around, but because the vehicle is so quiet, so I'm in all electric mode right now. I just charged it last night. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty quiet vehicle. And as it should be, you know, minivans are meant for long distance driving, a lot of highway cruising at very you know, comfortable, quiet speeds. So kids and family and, and friends can sleep. Um, and that's certainly, you can do that in this vehicle. It's uh, very comfortable. But as an all wheel driving experience, you know, it's a minivan. So it's not going to handle like a sports car. Um, it's got plenty of torque to get you up and going. And then of course, the engine will kick in when you floor it. But the road banners are very well, very, very good for a vehicle of this class and size. As I mentioned, it's uh, five, over 5,000 pounds, so it's quite heavy. Um, and again, there's a lot of stuff that you can carry in it. So um, you, you can do a lot. So if you want to haul, want to move people, uh, move stuff. You know, I remember in our minivan, we used to move, move to daughter, daughter to university <laughs> with a lot of stuff. So they come in quite handy. But overall driving characteristics are good. Again, because you've got that extra weight, uh, I believe it's about 500 pounds more for the battery pack that's in the center of the floor and all the equipment there. Um, that adds a little bit better um, center of gravity. This gives a 55-45 front, front and rear distribution weight um, split. So not bad for, again, a minivan. This is not supposed to be a sports car or anything even close to it, but it handles quite well. The suspension really takes care of all the bumps. Um, and uh, settles the vehicle quite easily over some massive potholes that I went through and uh, you know, uh, other types of bumps, speed bumps, things like that. So very, very pleasant driving experience. Um, very quite capable as it should be again to haul all that stuff around. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I wasn't a huge fan at the start with the ability to not put this in EV only mode. Uh, I thought that was a detriment, but now that I've driven for a few days um, and be able to rack up some kilometers, uh, I can see that the system itself does a really good job at maintaining the, uh, the ability to utilize the electric power as much as possible until exhausted. And, um, you know, as I've said, uh, um, I'll, have, I'll show you a picture of these stats coming up uh, later on. Uh, in my summary, but it, it works quite well. Um, so again, no squeaks, rattles, fit and finish is very nice. Uh, very comfortable to drive. I mean, I'm a bigger guy, so having something bigger for a change uh, is nice to be able to have armrests and uh, kind of stretch out and have a very comfortable driving um, position. And the seats are extremely supportive in these high-end seats. Um, I've never really had a problem with seats in any of my the Chrysler products that I've had in the past. I've had a few way back when, and they were always fine. Um, so okay, just you know, for what it is for a minivan, a five thousand dollar vehicle, five thousand pounds, excuse me, vehicle to haul people and stuff around. It's a, got really good road manners. The the torque is there um, as you as much as you need. See there, I floor it in the year the engine kick in. So when you need that extra boost, um, so it's enough. I mean, again, you're not going to be racing down the highway, but if you need to pass somebody, you've got the ability to do that. So good job and um, there's nothing here that surprises me because I've had many vans before so they are comfortable and quiet vehicles.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed the driving information and all the other stuff as well. Now let me get to pricing. These things aren't cheap and this top of the line Pinnacle vehicle uh, comes out uh, just over $62,000 Canadian before taxes and some other fees that are in there. This is loaded with a lot of different options. Now that does sound pretty expensive and it is expensive. You know, folks, I'm always looking for lower cost vehicles to the mass markets. However, as I mentioned, this is the only plug-in vehicle in its segment and it is a fair price to, to pay because you do qualify for the $5,000 federal incentive here uh, that's in Canada that you can get $5,000 off the purchase price. And in many provinces as well, you can stack their additional um, incentives here in Canada to get even more savings, up to 13,000 total in Quebec as an example. So all in price is $65,000 Canadian. Now again, this is the highest end. There are lower trim models. You can check out the Chrysler site in your area for those. But this is Canadian pricing, US and pricing is going to be a lower, of course, in different, uh, different price points. But it is good relative to the marketplace uh, for these type of vehicles. So let me talk about some of the pros and cons now on this vehicle. It's nothing as perfect as you folks know. The pros, I just mentioned about the pricing and it, yes, it does seem high, but it is a very strong argument to make for this vehicle when you factor in the incentives. Um, because with those incentives, and that's, if I just looked at the federal incentive here in Canada, that $5,000, as I mentioned, if I were to put that in and buy the same gas vehicle version of this, uh, this top of the line trim, they would be equal in price after the incentives. So that makes a big difference when you, when you have some of those incentives to bring your pricing down. And even if it didn't, there would be a return on that investment of several years to be able to recoup that difference in monies back. But with the incentives up front, it gives you at parity pricing pretty well against the gas version. And that's a strong argument on the positive side. And then you factor in the fuel savings. Put up this uh, mileage log, and as you can see, I've done several hundred kilometers here uh, for this week of driving, and the vast majority of that has been in all electric or using the battery mode only. Uh, about 15 to 20% of that mileage has been uh, only attributed to using the gas engine. That's pretty powerful. Now, I've got nice temperatures, idea situations. I'm just driving, predominantly stop and go traffic. But the point is, is that the gas engine only came on about 15 to 20% of the time while I was driving the vehicle. So even using a, a 25 to 30% number, you could save roughly around 3,500 to $4,000 US in fuel costs in about five years to save in five, five years. So on top of the price parity that's there with incentives, add on the fuel savings, and now you're starting to talk about significant savings for your wallet and for the average consumer. Now, I, I start with the financial because a lot of people are pumped about that. But you know, the main reason that a lot of folks get into an EV, even if it's a plug-in hybrid vehicle that has a good size battery pack, is to help save the environment. And when you are driving in all electric mode, there are zero emissions going out of the tailpipe. And again, if you can drive mainly in all electric mode for a lot of the time and utilize that fact, it makes a big difference. Two other quick pros. Hey, these are built in Windsor, Canada. I actually went out and got a tour of the plant, oh, probably about two years ago now. It was definitely pre-COVID. And uh, went, you know, uh, through the Electric Vehicle Society Windsor chapter, they uh, arranged a tour and got to see these things being built because they've been, built, they've been building them there for quite a few years. And that's the only plant that builds the Pacifica minivans, including the plug-in hybrid electric version. So great that it's built here in Canada. And the final pro is that this is the only minivan, only vehicle in the minivan segment that has a plug. And I can't stress that enough, folks. You've heard me talk about that a few times. It's a very important fact that you're the only player in this market that has a plug. So at least you have some better potential that, than anybody else in this market space today here in North America. Now, nothing's perfect. There are a few cons, a couple things. One is, as always, as I say, for the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, I'd love to see a bigger battery, right? I'd love to see more electric range, to be, have the ability to do 100 kilometers or, uh, in a day, uh, all electric, or 120, you know, I'm sure there's room in here to add, you know, another 10 kilowatts or so to get this up to 22, 25 kilowatt hour battery pack size. I think Chrysler could do that. It's always a cost game, I get it, but I'd love to see bigger batteries in the plug-in hybrids. If people are going to go and take those baby steps into electrification and don't want to go to an all-electric just yet, you need to give vehicles decent enough battery sizes to make it worthwhile. So we need to you know, advance this technology in plug-in hybrids as well if we're going to continue with them as a stopgap to all-electric.
Uh, and for some minivan owners uh, that want an all-wheel drive version of this, it's not available in the plug-in hybrid. As I mentioned, it only comes in a front-wheel drive version for the plug-in hybrid uh, uh, minivan. Mentioned earlier about the loss of the stow-and-go feature for the second row because of the battery pack, so that could be looked at as a con here if buyers want that feature. And lastly, the hybrid version it does not let you uh, purchase an eight passenger option in this. With the other versions, you can get up to eight passengers in, in this. This one is a seven passenger max. All right, so I'm nearing the end of this review and let me give you my final thoughts. Is, do I recommend this? Absolutely, folks. I've only said about five times, I think, on this episode that this is the only uh, plug-in minivan in the North American marketplace today. And for that reason and that reason alone, it gets a big, big thumbs up recommendation from me as a very uh, great um, a choice for consumers to make when they're looking at minivans. If I were looking at one today, I would look at this plug-in hybrid version. And the main reason, even if I wasn't an EV guy, the main reason is for the cost savings. It just makes financial sense. I can get this vehicle that costs the same with incentives as the, as the internal combustion vehicle version, and then over time I'm saving money because I'm using less fuel. That's a no-brainer to me. And, you know, they're still safe, they still get all the, the, the top scores and all this stuff for the class segment. So why wouldn't I look at something like that? It's not an inconvenience to plug this in. Even on a level one, even just on a 110, 120 volt outlet, you could pretty well charge this up in 12 hours. So overnight, if you plugged it in at seven at night, you'd be ready to go at seven in the morning to this. And even if you was a little shorter, you can get pretty good battery life on this. So for that reason alone, don't have to spend infrastructure, don't have to buy a level two charger at your home. You can get away with just plugging this into the wall, the normal socket, and take advantage of those fuel savings over the course of time. So why wouldn't I? And then the other benefits that I mentioned. So for that, again, it's a big thumbs up. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Probably went a little longer than uh, I wanted to, but this is an important facet of the vehicle marketplace. Something that kind of gets overlooked because everybody's focusing on SUVs and pickup trucks nowadays. But the minivan is a pretty solid segment and a big market, and I'm glad that Chrysler has come out with this product. So thank you very much for watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Check out all my other shows. I got lots of shows that are out there with different uh, news subjects and uh, car reviews and things like that. If you're a Patreon supporter, you know who you are. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, always, always blessed uh, to, to talk and see the Patreon support out there and talk to some of the supporters. If you want more information, just check out the link below. Everybody stay safe, of course, as we continue to get through things and keep your eye on the EV marketplace. So until the next show, I appreciate again you're watching. Everybody stay safe and I will see you when I see you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.